All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to get into today is, are your workouts right for you? Uh, if you don't work out, I don't know if this is going to be a good podcast for you, or maybe hopefully, maybe it'll inspire you to work out if you're not. Um, but I've been lately putting up a lot of videos uh, regarding fitness on my YouTube channel. Uh, I've been getting a lot of good feedback. First, I was kind of just putting, talking in the gym about all the different things I've learned basically since I was five years old going to the YMCA, and then I started to take it a lot more serious. So I've been in a gym, more or less weightlifting is what I'm talking about, from like 12 years old, and I'm almost 50. So I was kind of just discussing things, all different types of workouts, and then I And then people kept saying, Rich, why don't you show us some of your routines, which is very time consuming, (laughs) but I went and did it. So I recently posted um, videos on some of my chest workouts, shoulder, back, by tri, legs, swimming, and I'm going to be doing one on jumping as well, which is kind of a form of cardio slash um, leg workout. People are always asking me how I jump so high at my age, and it really comes down to hips. I believe, and your knees, obviously, just your legs in general. But it's really about protecting yourself, which is what I want to get into before I get too off base here. Let me get some water. So if you've, uh, I think most of us, at least in America, have been in a gym at this point in time. So no matter who you are, I think you're going to be able to relate to this. And here's the thing. It may not even have to relate to it going to a gym. This could just be anyone working out in general, people who hike, Swim. I don't care if you walk, treadmill, um, whatever the kit, you know, bodybuild, weightlifting, jujitsu, whatever it is, karate, martial arts, MMA. Are your workouts, uh, are they really helping you sometimes or are they hurting you? And I just did a podcast on self awareness. And I don't think a lot of people are really that self aware when they're working out. I really good at that with the gym. I'm not always that self-aware in life outside the gym, but I'm very aware inside the gym because I'm very focused. And I kind of study. For some reason, I just gravitate towards not not only do I study other people, what they're doing, I know my body extremely well. And I think because I spent so much time in the gym, but for some reason, I have almost a photographic memory when I'm working out. I just know, and I never do the same workout. But I can almost just, I just envision me doing it. I don't know. It's almost like I could step outside my body when I work out a lot of times. I know that sounds crazy. You hear these professional athletes saying when they're so in the zone, they can almost leave their body and see themselves playing. I almost can do that. I've done that in the gym. I know I have. But what I've realized over the years is what I did wrong in the gym and one of the thing was I was damaging my body because I was going so hardcore at times. And I never took steroids in my entire life. I took supplements, but anything I took, you could get the GNC. And I only did them in my early 20s. I did some creatine in my 30s. I'd get a smoothie at the Bally's, the gym, inside my, you know. But for the most part, I basically just ate a lot of food, a lot of steaks, a lot of Italian food. But when it comes to working out, and I'm realizing that now, I think people don't, evolve enough or pay attention and they take on certain people's workouts that may be good for them now but you have to learn down the path is that hurting me or helping me especially your tendons and joints I uh I I talked about this before on my podcast I was very small and then I got very big and it happened literally like in a year year and a half I graduated high school five six hundred thirty five pounds year and a half I'm 220 pounds 510 and I ended up getting up to about 250 but I became I always lifted heavy and strong and for some reason my body clicked and I went from even squatting 180 135 185 pounds for some reps in high school before you know it I'm repping out four to five hundred pounds I was um, leg pressing 1500 pounds I was just kicking it in the ass that's just legs and I'm using that for an example because I would warm up. I always warm up on a bicycle still to this day, at least five minutes, stretch, all those things. But I really did not. I don't know. Even though I was wrapping sometimes my knees, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I didn't want to become a professional uh, power lifter or or a professional bodybuilder, I should say. Either one of those. I I just wanted to be big and strong, but it was obviously more ego-driven. 
And I think a lot of people when they work out, it's more ego driven, which is fine because I think a lot of times you have to be ego driven on a personal level to get the results you want to get. And I don't, and again, this isn't for people that want to become a, some professional athlete because you have to push yourself to become a professional athlete in places that I, I have no idea where you have to push yourself. You have to fight through injuries, a different mindset. Uh, you're talking about making a living at a sport. That's a whole different level. I'm just talking about people working out in general that want really good results. But back to when you're working out, is it to help you or hurt you? Because a lot of times it could be both. I was getting great results lifting heavy weights, bigger, stronger. Um, actually, I wasn't even that bad cardio-wise. Even though I was heavy, had flexibility, had all these. I, I really had, and I know with my genetics, um, I was really gifted. I'll be the first one to say that. But I kind of wasn't looking down the line. To a certain degree, I was, but not entirely. Because after my 40s, um, then I started to realize, well, I always knew I'd have to lose weight. So I was like still 230 to 250. My weight always fluctuated. I said, I have to get this weight off. I was very fortunate, though, because I dropped down to about 185 pounds uh, about 10 years ago. And... For one is my skin, as you can you know, imagine, I always cream. I always put a lot of cream on my body so I wouldn't have stretch marks, or at least I thought that would work. And I was very fortunate. I don't have huge stretch marks. Very fortunate. I do have some of my legs because they were like tree trunks, they used to call them. Maybe the back of my tries a little. But I could tell my chest was sagging. My stomach got really good. I was very, very fortunate. And the trick that I did, which I know, is you lose weight very slowly. I'm not saying I lost all that weight quickly. That was like after a year and a half, two years. My theory is the slower you lose that weight, the better off you're going to be because it gives your body time to adapt and adjust, even getting bigger. I had that big spurt, like I told you earlier, that I got really big fast, but that was almost like naturally just happening. But for the most part, if you want to gain or lose weight, you can listen to my other podcast or YouTube videos where slow is better. I even look at one pound a week or one pound a month because the faster you lose that weight, I'm telling you, that skin just starts to sag or it's not prepared. Your body goes in shock. Same with expanding your body. These guys that gain all this muscle in, say, a month or two, stretch their skin out. Their body goes into shock, I believe. Take your time. And um, back to working out, though. Let me get some water here. When I lost all that weight, I didn't look good. So I ended up going back up to 195, 200, where's where I'm at right now. But in the gym, I had to change my workout up and realize doing legs, doing chest, shoulders, all these different exercises, you got to realize over the last, basically from 12 years old, and now I'm whatever, almost 50, nonstop, I've done 100,000 curls (laughs) sets, I'll bet. Uh, I don't even know how many reps. Same with any body part because I never stopped. And a lot of times I would hit two body parts per week. That's how nuts I was. So I have lived in the gym. What has that done to me physically now? That's what you got to kind of look at in life working. Excuse me. Working out. A lot of people don't look at it that way. And I talk about runners all the time. Where running, I never, I used to run forever until I hit my 20s. Then I was done. Especially when I got bigger. I'm like, wow, this is jarring my lower back. This is jarring. My ankles felt like shit. My neck, everything felt horrible. And I used to, I'd hate to say, I'd look at runners in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, like in Runner Magazine. I was always looking at magazines. I'm like, I'd hate to say this. Nothing, no disrespect to a lot of runners. I was like, my God, look what they've kind of, their body converts into. Everything looks like it's collapsing for the most part. And then I would look at bodybuilders and I kind of like that look, but they were very excessive too. So I kind of like the look between a power lifter actually and a bodybuilder. I wasn't obsessed with having abs anymore. I didn't have to be shredded. But I kind of like, I guess Mike Tyson would be the build I kind of liked. Which was funny is I thought he was massive at 220 or whatever. And before you know it, I'm like 30 pounds heavier than him. And I'm looking at him going, wow, I thought he was massive. He doesn't look that massive to me anymore. But I had to have certain goals. I do that all the time when working out. If I see a certain body style or I see a certain weight I want to move, I just focus in and do that. But back to if you're working out, I want you to really start looking at the long game. And you want to make your muscles, your joints, your tendons, and your flexibility. You know, you don't want to take a toll on that. That's going to be flexibility. I can't even explain how how you want that more than anything. You definitely want to start taking care of your hips, your knees, 
Your legs are so important. I talk about this all the time that people just underestimate because when you become where you can't walk or go places, and you can see this with a lot of professional athletes, especially you know football players and things, you see them limping and walking. When your legs, it, your wheels go, you kind of go. You need your wheels, your legs. You need to be able to move. You need, you know, that's where you're going to be burning up a lot of fat. You get to go wherever you want. I don't think a lot of men, when they're working out, really concentrate on their legs or take a toll on them. And it can even be in a racquetball room, maybe playing too much racquetball, or it could be whatever it is. Just be very aware. If your knees start to hurt you, and I understand you don't want to give up your game or your sport or working out, you may have to evolve into something different. I don't care if it's swimming to get the buoyancy. Take care of those knees, hips, those legs, your quads, your hammies, your calves, your shins. I just heard that stat where from your ankle down, there's more bones in that area than your whole entire upper body, I think, from your ankle up. That's amazing. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong in there. Your arms too, your joints and everything, your shoulders, take care of that stuff. As you get older, you definitely want to keep, you know, the bottom line is when you're working out, again, not when you're younger, you're younger. And I should say this is more for like a middle-aged person, which I consider middle-aged 35 and up. I don't know why everybody thinks middle age is 50. They're out of their mind. Most people don't live to 100. Most people live to their 70s, average-wise, mid-70s, if you're lucky. So start thinking, in your, this, this is really for those guys, maybe 35 and up, is look at the workout for longevity and health and feeling good. And But there's a difference. I still get sore constantly. I work out extremely hard. I'm, just, I'm not going to lie about that. I'm all about bringing the intensity because the intensity, I believe, is what brings the workout. And when you walk into a gym, and I've, I've talked about this before on my podcast or my YouTube videos, I don't know if you've ever played a sport before, but kind of sometimes when you came to practice, you, some days you felt like practicing if you were in a sport, some days you didn't, some days you were hyped up, some days you were lazy, some, you, know, you may have not had a good night's sleep, or you were all jacked up ready to play and you're all excited. If you look at a lot of... Like if you played sports in high school each season, look at the first week of practice. Everybody's all stoked, fighting for a position, all crazy. Go back towards the end of the season when it's over. A lot of people, unless they're going for like a state tournament or something, uh, if they're just an average team, you can just see it. They're out of juice. They're burnt out. They don't even want to go to all the games necessarily. They're kind of like just, you know, they're just not into it like they were the first week, right? You, You could just see it. And then on the other hand, when you went to go play uh, a lot of times, here's another emotion that I talk about going in the gym is when you played on a team and you were going to compete. Now you're at a much higher level. It's intense. Everybody's watching you. You're competing against people you don't know. You have that intensity. And that's the intensity I talk about going to the gym with. I believe you have to have that type of intensity continuously to get, continue, like, get results. Because what happens is if you keep going at it like it's practice, it just becomes a routine. You're just kind of going through the motions. Now, will that keep you in shape? I hope so. But again, it may also not be, it may not be, at the beginning it may put you in really good shape, but as time went on, it just may have leveled off, and before you know it, you're kind of half-assing it. But I also like to talk about the third phase, which is like a tournament. If you've ever played in sports and you're going to play a tournament, because that's a much longer endeavor. Obviously, it could be a day, it could be a weekend, it could be a week. you got to be really psyched up, stoked to go play a tournament and keep that level of intensity up. It's not just one game and then you leave, go home and sleep. You know, you may be playing multiple games, like I said, throughout that week. It's a whole different, it's it's a whole different mindset. And again, going to the gym, you have to, I believe, have that mindset. But there's a difference between having the mindset to kick it in the ass, make yourself sore, and helping yourself physically compared to beating yourself down and hurting yourself. Again, when you're younger, you don't realize this. You're not because you recover so quickly. But as you get middle-aged, you have to understand when you wake up the next day, if, if certain things like your lower back is starting to hurt you more and more, maybe you're squatting too heavy. I'm just using for an example. Maybe you shouldn't do an exercise called good mornings when you're doing legs. Maybe um, the way you're twisting, doing a certain exercise. Maybe you're doing back too heavy. Figure those things out because I have a close friend that I worked out with for many, many years. Let me get some water. And um, we would deadlift, squat, and, you know, bench and all that stuff. So he was really great at shoulder presses and curling. 
but he had very small legs. And when it came to deadlifting, extremely strong his back, but his legs didn't have, you know, it's almost like the deadlift. You need that extra boost with that legs. And I was going really heavy. We both were like four or 500 pounds for reps. He wanted to keep up and he was doing it as well, but he was almost doing it where he wasn't using really any of his legs. And his time went on and we used to work together and he moved equipment and so did I. And we were in the vending business. We had to move pool tables and 3D golfs and dark games and jukeboxes. We were always moving stuff. As time went on, his back destroyed. I still think to this day, he's rocked. And I have another close friend that was one of the strongest, littlest guys in the state of Florida. Fastest, strong. I'm talking to kids like 140 pounds bench pressing, 350 pounds, maybe more. He's amazing. He's having problems now. And I think what happens with a lot of middle-aged men is, and I'm one of them, is you're trying to keep up with the Joneses a little bit in the gym. And you never, I was smart enough about 10 years to start backing off a lot uh, and do different movements. They kept hitting heavy weights going into their 50s and even in their 50s. And I heard just recently one of my close friends too, I used to lift what he's having back problems as well. And that's a very hard, when your back starts to go, and I know he's been lifting his entire life like I have, and if you ever get a chance, you can watch YouTube on a lot of professional bodybuilders. I don't, I don't want to name them now, and I know that's extreme, but if you're somebody who's been working out for 20, 30, 40 years, you played sports when you were younger, especially if you played football or you know, you, you boxed or wrestled or jujitsu or those things, you have to be aware that you know, you have beat your body to death. You have beat it up in good ways and bad. I'm all about beating the body up and having it recover. But like I was saying earlier, you have to figure out now at a certain age, is this helping or hurting me? And I don't think we think of that. I think by us just mentally being programmed to say, no, I'm going to go in there, which I love the intensity, kick it in the ass. But if you're still doing things like even if you're a runner, like I was talking about earlier, you've been running for 20, 30 years on pavement, for instance, your ankles, the balls of your feet, um, your back, all these things. Now, if you're not having any problems whatsoever, God bless you. But if you're starting to feel things, don't ignore that. Again, that does not mean you have to entirely stop running. You just may have to figure out other things to do. You may be able to get on different types of equipment where it's not jarring your body. I'm a 100% believer in the pool. I love doing underwater swimming. I just put a video up on my YouTube. I'm all about that pool with that buoyancy, taking the pressure off my ankles. And I get to move in a pool all these different ways that I can't move on land. It's just a whole different thing. I'm all about the breathing. I run in the pool. I do laps, run backwards. I do jumps. I do lunges in the pool. I do all these different things. I also love the sauna. Uh, the sauna, they're doing more and more studies. Unbelievable for the heart, your skin, your breathing again. All these type of things, maybe start incorporating in your workout if you haven't in your past. And start studying, man. If you're working out, it's a huge part of your life. Don't just watch videos. Even though I tell people for workout routines, watch videos, YouTube, Instagram, unbelievable. Watch other people in your gym, but read about it. Read and also not just watch videos on workouts. Watch videos on the like what effects certain things have on you doing certain things. Because you may not even realize that you could be hurting yourself. <laughs> and, you know, it's just the way it is. I don't know how else to explain it, but be very, again, self-aware of your own body. Everybody's body acts or reacts different to every different exercise. Everybody has different genetics. Everyone has a different lifestyle. So everyone gets different amount of sleep. Nobody eats the same amount of food. So again, we're all different weights, all different heights, all these different things. Emotionally, we're different. So you have to figure out what works best for you. I always talk about that with fitness. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. I don't care if you got a goddamn twin brother. You are two different people. You're going to take on different things. You're not going to be equal. And I think a lot of times we end up pairing up with our friends and doing things because they're our buddies. And say one, I'll tell you this, my uncle used to play basketball in Chicago all the time. And I was kind of heavy. I was like 240, 250. I was okay in basketball. I can jump super high and I'm pretty good on D. But um, I started playing with him once a week. 
And I even was so heavy. I, I, you know how they have mirrors around the gyms in the old days? Why? I have no idea. I, they most, most of them took it out. I hit the mirror and shattered the whole thing. I felt horrible. Cut the whole side of my, uh, my back. But that was, a, that was, that should have woke me up too. But I realized I was really beat up after that. Cardio, I was okay. I was actually decent. Now, this is like when I was 30 because I worked out so much. I still was in the gym. I'd still incorporate cardio. But I'm going to tell you something like, I had a rotator cuff get torn in my early 20s. I could tell from rebounding that was starting to hurt more and more. My lower back, for some reason, yeah, I think from all the jumping and my weight, and it was obvious my weight was too, I was too heavy too. The bottom line was for my frame, I was too heavy. I didn't want to acknowledge that. Of course, I should have dropped weight. But I'm thinking, no, I want to be bigger. I want to be bigger. And I was getting ready to shoot my movie, Sore Losers, and I wanted to have some size too. So I was probably actually like 140. My knees too. So I started to think, what well, this is kicking my ass. Am I going to give up weightlifting or basketball? Obviously, I give up basketball. But there were signs there, even me playing basketball, to say, Rich, you know what? You know, you're kind of heavy here. You're too heavy. You're not that old. You should be able to play some pickup hoops. But I just ignored them. And then another 10 years went by me doing that. But eventually, I started to get out of bed. Uh, and you can hear all the cracks and crinkles and all these things because I've worked out for so many years. But again, there are a lot of signs. You with your friends working out again is what I want to get back to. Pay attention. And also, if you're doing things that you don't feel like just may not feel good doing with your friends. So your friends play rugby, hypothetically, and you're out there getting your ass kicked and it doesn't feel good. There's a reason. <laughs> Stop doing it because you could permanently damage something. Uh, I just saw a guy playing rugby and his kneecap got knocked out of place and he popped it back into place and then he went back into the game and they said they don't even know when he's older if he's going to ever be able to walk normally again because of what he did. And I, I know that's extreme, but I think sometimes when we're working out, we may not be as extreme as knocking our kneecap out, but we're just taking a toll and damaging something. And we just don't want to either realize it or we don't want to make changes because we're caught either playing a sport we love. And it could be anything. It could be soccer, whatever the case may be. Just be aware you're not hurting yourself. That's what I'm really trying to say in this because I don't think a lot of people... I think people get confused between, um, how would I say this, working out and getting uh, a great workout and thinking, oh, fight through the pain. Oh, my ankle screwed up a little bit. I'm having a little bit of ankle issue or my foot hurts. Duh, fight through it, fight through it, fight through it. That's fine, fight through it, fight. Before you know it, you're kind of used to the pain. You kind of get used to it. But you do that year after year after year, and then guess what's going to happen when you all of a sudden turn 50 years old? You go to the doctor. He's like, yeah, um, you've, you, know, you did this to your body for X amount of years. Now you're going to have a major problem, and that's the last thing you want. So work out for health, for longevity. Don't just work out for the moment. Do not be a prisoner of the moment in the gym, okay? I'm going to wrap it up there. If you want to check out more stuff regarding fitness, like I said, I got YouTube channels up there. I put a bunch of stuff up there, not only talking about fitness, at least my perspective and videos. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Um, I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program out as well. You can just go to MasteringSelfConfidence.com or you can find everything on my website, RichTrelenza.com. But leave a comment if you like it, you don't like it. This stuff is kind of posted everywhere now. Um, but yeah, please be aware in the gym. Be careful. Help people. Teach people. Don't be afraid to ask questions in the gym. I know more than ever now, people are putting their headphones on, kind of ignoring each other in the gym. I'm telling you, for a while, just when you're, if you're going to first start working out, put the headphones away. Just focus in on what you're doing. Look at the body part you're working out on. So if you're doing legs, look at your legs. You know, look in the mirror. If you're, you know, you're curling in a dumbbell area, look in the mirror. Look at your bicep. Don't get caught up on your phone constantly. Who's texting you? Who emailed you? Making sure you have the perfect song every time. Skipping over songs. All that type of shit. Just focus at the beginning and focus on your body. Your body is always talking to you. I don't think people really even realize that. It talks to you because like, say you're hungry, you know when you're hungry, you're thirsty, you know when you're thirsty, right? But a lot of times when you're in a gym, it may be craving things like saying, hey, <laughs> like, like if you're looking in the mirror and you're, you're like, hey, let's do some more legs, your legs are caps, or let's, let's build some more strength in uh, my triceps or your body kind of talks to you. I really believe it if you just start to listen to it. And that goes for when it's hurt too. A lot of times there's a difference between being sore, like I said, or being hurt. 
figure that out. Also, when you're doing certain sets, when you're in it, you got to be very alert or aware when you're doing something, when something is, there's a difference between getting a huge pump, getting a lot of blood flow, and then another one where it's starting to throb or it's hurting or it's damaging your body. It's telling you you're just not paying attention. All right? All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Take care. And again, thanks for listening to the Rich Cholenza Show. WTF are you talking about? And if you're traveling, safe travels.